This video is part of our course on PySite 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of cute widgets using the Python API under the PySite 6 or a cute for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. I would like to welcome you in this course and congratulate you on taking a step to become a better Qt for Python developer. Qt is a cross-platform application development framework. You can use it to write applications for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and even embedded devices. The way Qt works, you write your code once and recompile it for your target platform. So for example, if you write your application on Windows, if you want to generate a Linux binary, what you need to do is to recompile your code on a Linux machine, and that's going to give you a binary that can run on Linux. You can repeat the process on a Mac, and that's going to drastically reduce your development time because you basically write your code once and run it or recompile it for whatever target where you want to run your application. Now, Python is one of the official languages we can use to develop Qt applications. The main language for Qt is currently C++, but Python is quickly catching up under the umbrella of Qt for Python or PySide 6 as it is currently known. Again, going through Python, you can write applications that are cross-platform that run on Windows, Linux, and Mac, but currently support for mobile and embedded is in development. I wouldn't really use this in production, but there should be good progress in this area in the future. Now, if you talk about PySide 6, some people are going to mention PyQt. What about PyQt? PyQt is another library which is available to let you write Qt applications using the Python programming language, and it can mostly do the same things we can do with PySide 6. But PySide 6 has probably a better future because it is under the official Qt project. So you can expect support for things like Android and iOS to go faster than PyQt. Another thing is that to use PyQt in a commercial application, you need to buy a separate license for PyQt and you also need to buy another license for Qt. So if you really want to drive your cost down, it is beneficial to use PySide because you will be buying the license once, which is going to include Qt and PySide 6. So that's something for you to consider, but I'm going to leave the decision to you whether you use PyQt and PySide. This course is not going to cover PyQt, but the good news is that once you have PySide 6 mastered, it is going to be very fast to pick up PyQt because the APIs are mostly similar. What's going to change is what you import in your Python files, and you will be basically able to do the same thing. So whether you use PyQt or PySide 6, that's going to be your choice but we will be focusing on Pi Side 6 and the API should help you to pick up PyQt if you happen to need that. Now let's head over to the Qt page on Wikipedia and see some information about Qt. It is a cross-platform application development framework you can use to write applications for Android, iOS, Linux. You can see a lot of things here you can write applications for using Qt. It was developed by these two guys, Harvard and Eric. And it is currently developed by the Qt company, the company owning licenses of Qt. It is written in C++. And what I want you to see is a bunch of applications that are written in Qt to kind of give you an idea of what you can do if you learn Qt properly. If you go down here, you see Autodesk Maya, which is a popular application for building 3D stuff. We can go down and find Krita here, which is a design software you can use to do painting and drawing, things like that. You can see Mathematica. If you are a scientist, you must know this. You can see OBS here, which is what I am using to record this video. You can see Qubit Torrent you can use to download torrents and things like that. There are really powerful applications that are written in Qt. You can see VLC Media Player. You can see WPS Office, which is really cool if you want to do some office stuff. And if you go down, you will find a bunch of organizations that are using Qt. And there are some big names in here. You can see AMD, you can see Blizzard, 
you can see DreamWorks, you can see Panasonic, Philips, you can see CMS and Samsung, you can see Tesla. There's a lot of big companies using Qt and this should give you an idea of how powerful Qt really is. And you can be in the same league as these companies and these pieces of software if you learn to develop applications with Qt properly. And this course is a perfect starting point if you want to use Python to develop Qt widgets applications. Okay, one thing I want you to know is that there are two APIs when it comes to developing Qt applications. There is the Qt widgets API, which provides components you can use to build graphical user interfaces for desktop. This is mainly targeted for desktop platforms, mainly Windows, Linux, and Mac. But uh, there is a new API, which is called QML, which also englobes new devices like mobile devices and embedded devices. And you can use this to build dynamic and fluid graphical user interfaces that look modern and really feel like they are from our time here. But make no mistake, QML applications can also run on desktop. So you will need to do some research to decide whether you want to use Qt widgets or QML. But if you exclusively want to target desktop, I would still recommend using Qt widgets because it is a mature API. It is tested. It has been in use since the 1990s and it is really powerful. So use that if you don't care about mobile or embedded. If you want to target mobile and embedded, please use QML. It is best suited for that. And one thing I want to point out is that this course is about Qt widgets. If you are interested in QML, please check out other courses we have on QML because this course is not talking about QML. I want that to be super clear. Now, if you decide to use Qt to build your applications, regardless of whether you are using widgets or QML, you will be writing your logic in some programming language. And the two official languages that are supported by the Qt company or the Qt projects in general is Python, which we will be covering in this course here, and C++. But this course, as I said, is about using Python to develop Qt widgets applications. So this is going to be our focus here using Python to write Qt widgets application that can run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Another thing I would like you to know is that Qt is not just about graphical user interfaces. Many people can mistake it for that. Qt can be used for much more. If you happen to be using Qt already for a graphical user interface, you still have a window to take advantage of even more things from the Qt framework. You can do networking, you can do threading, you can write database applications, you can use tons of other utility classes that are provided by Qt. So if you are already using Qt, take some time to see some other things you can take advantage of. In this course, I will touch on some networking and show you how you can do some basic HTTP stuff, but that's not enough to really call yourself a network developer using Qt. If you want to really go deep, you will need to do more research, but this course should give you a good foundation on which to build even more cool stuff. Now, this course is going to be a perfect starting point for you if you want to build graphical user interfaces in Python using PySide 6, obviously. But I think it is even going to give you a good foundation, even if you plan to use QML. If you are new to the Qt ecosystem, I usually recommend starting by Qt widgets, which is what we cover in this course. And from there, you will grasp the fundamentals of how to use Qt to write cross-platform applications. And that's going to really be easy for you to do that because you will be writing your applications on desktop. You will be able to generate applications that run on the same machine where you are sitting. Once you have the fundamentals, you can venture into QML and the same fundamentals you get from Qt widgets are going to apply more or less in QML. QML is a declarative language and that makes it easy to pick up by designers. But this course is about Qt widgets using Python and it is going to give you the fundamentals that are going to help you out even if later you decide to use QML. That's the point I am trying to make here. Now, I will be preparing this course on a Windows machine but that's not going to be a problem because Python and PySide 6 run where both on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So you can watch what I do on Windows and try to adapt that to your operating system. And that's going to work really well. Don't worry about that. This course is going to work for you whether you are on Windows, Linux, or Mac. 
The requirements for this course are not really that hard. All I require is a basic understanding of Python and a basic understanding of object-oriented programming in Python. If you can use things like classes, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism, you will probably be fine with the course using Python here. The most important thing, in my opinion, is the strong drive and willingness to learn which is going to go a long way if you come along problems. You won't give up easily. You will keep trying until you get the thing running here. But I will do my best to explain everything I use in the course. If you need a refresher on Python, please note this course is going to assume you already know Python. So make sure you learn Python first before you take on this course. Now, this is all I had to cover in this video here. I hope you found it interesting and you are encouraged and excited to learn about PySide 6, we are going to head over in the next lecture and show you some of the cool applications you get to build as you go through the course here. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.